Oh, hello. I'm now live. This is very exciting. Thank you for having me. Um, I guess I'll just wait for people to join. I've never done this before. Oh, hello. Thanks for joining in. Um, <clears throat> hi. So this is my first time doing an Instagram live, which I feel a little bit nervous about. Um, and everybody seems very supportive so far. So thank you. Uh, which is weird actually, because I've done like a decade of live radio and I've also, you know, done a, like a live TV show and everything, despite it being a failure. Remember that show, um, Ben Elton live from planet earth. I was a cast member on that. I mean, it wasn't all bad. I thought it was okay. Um, <laughs> but it got axed after three episodes. Um, well, thank you so much for joining in on this. Um, oh, hello from Perth and Greece. My gosh, people from all over the world. How exciting. Um, so I, I guess I'm doing an Instagram takeover. Thank you, Plastic Free July, for having me. Um, I was really honoured to be asked, actually, because, yeah, I'm not a scientist. I'm certainly, I mean, I'm an environmentalist, but I'm certainly an amateur one. Um, and I really got involved in trying to be plastic free, waste free because I gave a shit about the environment and the world that my children were going to inherit, uh, which is why I got involved and, um, and I ran a podcast. I sort of had a podcast about the first three months of my baby's life, my newborn, and whether I could achieve the mission of going zero waste which, spoiler, I ended up sort of surpassing and kind of doing it for much longer. There was a few cheats, actually. I, I will get to that, um, some of the stuff that I found hard. Um, but, yeah, I, I if hi from Russia, cool. Um, so in Australia, I'm a radio presenter and a comedian, but, um, yeah, I've also had this podcast, which is called Zero Waste Baby, if you wanted to have a look at it. Um... I hope I'm not too ramshackled here in Australia, in Sydney, where I live. Um, I just moved to a local government area that has um, extreme lockdowns. So it was really bad timing for my move. So I am a bit tired, um, but hopefully it'll be fine. If you do have questions, hopefully I can get to them. Uh, but otherwise, I will just sort of um, run through a bunch of stuff that Plastic Free July has sent me. And we will... Um, We'll get to this. So how did I deal with plastics and waste in general with my newborn Zoe? So um, I guess the aim for me was to avoid wet wipes, disposable nappies, um, bin liners, you know, stuff like that, squeezy packs in the end, uh, and reducing my plastics just generally. So like, attempting to cleanse our whole life of plastic toys and unnecessary disposable plastic so that we could kind of start over. Because I was just horrible with my first baby, Lila, um, in that because I was just chucked into the deep end as every mum is, I was just like, whatever's convenient, whatever works, um, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. And so I was just ripping through disposable nappies and I loved wet wipes. They became my best friend. I started to like use them um, for myself at a cafe instead of a napkin. And like, I remember one point that I was mopping my floor with wet wipes because I was like, these are so good. And it was weird, actually, because in the rest of my life, I was pretty conscientious, you know, like I was, you know, um, recycling myself plastics and bringing my, you know, cup to the coffee shop and all of the simple kind of things. But then when it came to babies, I was just like, oh, whatever's most convenient will be easiest and I'll just um, go with that. But for my second baby, it, I made the decision because Australia was on fire, essentially. There'd been droughts, there'd been floods, there'd been, you know, the government wasn't doing anything about it, it felt like. And I was like, what can I do? <laughs> Actually, my husband looked at me and he was like, should we really be bringing a kid into this world? And I was like, well, dude, I'm six months pregnant. So that feels kind of late. <laughs> and um, I thought, well, I mean, we could just rest our laurels and hope that she's the next Greta Thunberg, or we could try to do something ourselves. So um, uh, to those just joining, thank you for joining. I'm talking about um, my zero waste journey for my second baby, Zoe. Um, and by no means do I 
feel like I am um, have done it perfectly. I've just really attempted, which I think everyone, if you attempt, that is um, the greatest challenge, I find. I'm like also a vegetarian who attempts very hard at being a vegetarian, but occasionally lapses when I'm at the pub, which is not very often. Um, <clears throat> So um, tell us about the fails as well as the wins. Well, probably one of the biggest fails for me, and which I recommend that you give this a go if um, you are able to, because it certainly takes patience and it takes time, is elimination communication. So this is this nappy-less um, potty training technique where essentially you train your baby to... Um, we and poo on command using a series of like noise cues, like clicks and whistles or whatever. It's very like Pavlov's, Pavlov's doggy. So you teach them to associate a noise with <clears throat> weeing or pooing. So when they're doing it, you like go <coughs> or s or <clears throat> which is apparently very common for poo. And then um, when they associate that <laughs> with pooing or weeing, then um, you make that noise again when they're doing like the squelching around or whatever, like the, the things that make it seem like they're about to nearly want to do a wee. And then you get them to do it over a potty or a bit of Tupperware or the hell, the sink, wherever, the garden. Um, and so you avoid nappies altogether, which like raises questions about how you do it overnight and all that sort of stuff. But it's a great way to avoid disposable nappies and cloth nappies. So I was like, I'm going to try this thing that sure, it's like a novelty in the Western world, but a lot of countries have been doing it forever. I mean, if you've visited China, you're like, you kind of see people do, doing this elimination communication technique. Um, and it was really hard because you have to be very patient and have the time to watch your baby on like a mat or whatever while they're um, wing and then you see their cues and then you associate it with the noise and all that sort of stuff. So that was tricky for me. And I only lasted like a week cause I was like, I'm no good at this. She's no good at this. Let's just forget that and go back to the cloth nappies. That was a major fail for me in, um, trying to be zero waste, um, with my baby Zoe, particularly in the beginning. I was like, I don't know how I'm, expect I can't even her little face I couldn't it was so small I was like I can't even see what she's doing let alone whether it's indicating she's about to do a wee Ugh. um some wins for me about going zero waste was just how easy it is to get rid of wet wipes at the end of the day I kept thinking about the fat burg in London is that I mean I think that's mostly fat actually but I also associate that with wet wipes um, anyway, uh, if you replace it with like flannelettes, um, even in the end, I ended up actually just ripping up old flannel shirts and using them, uh, as ass wiping things. I'm sorry that this is so blue and just mostly talking about bums so far, but actually that's a lot of what parenting in the first three months is. So, mm. um, yeah, so replacing wet wipes, super easy. You just get that flannel, you just um, spray it with some water or some special stuff that you can buy online, which is like um, moistens the flannel, so it's nice for the baby's ass. And um, that was really easy. It certainly adds to your washing, which is tricky if it's winter, which it was for me. And I was avoiding using a dryer, mostly because I couldn't afford one and I don't have one, but also the environment. Um, and yeah, so uh, it was hard to get things to just dry on the line in the house, like on a, um, like a wire line just in front of the heater. That was tricky, but it certainly was worth it just to see how much it reduced uh, this stuff that was going into landfill, like crazy. That is just such a huge element that are nappies, um, which we'll get to cloth nappies in a sec. Um, one of the other wins was just some of the people I met along the way while making this podcast, zero waste baby. So it, I, um, intentionally went out to meet them, but then I ended up like just being taken into odd directions. So I made this choice that I wanted to uh, do something with my placenta to avoid birth waste 
from the very outset. And I ended up being introduced to this placenta artist who um, like draws on placentas using the like blood and stuff and um, creates, like makes it into a stamp and then pops it on paper, which turns into artwork. And it's really beautiful. She also then, like if you want with your placenta, she can crush it up and make it into pills, which you can have afterwards. And uh, that's very common, you know, jury's out on whether it's um, super healthy for you or yeah, like there's not a lot of medical evidence to back it up. Oh my God, I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. I, the placenta artist, that's so freaking cool. Thanks, S. Sawyer. Yeah, it was pretty cool actually. And then anyway, she's just really, she was really fascinating. Virginia was her name. You can find her on the podcast. And she ended up um, talking to me about breastfeeding for a long time and how um, that's such a beautiful connection, but it's also like a waste-free alternative. Like if you can breastfeed, it's really good, which of course, you know, for some people formula is the only way and it, that is great and awesome for you because it was a problem for me for my first baby where I ended up using a lot of formula. With my second, I didn't at all. Um, and it was it just made it so much easier and like a better waste-free option. So I was lucky with the zero waste baby that that worked out. Um, and well done to anyone who manages to breastfeed for a very long time because I, it's a beautiful thing to do, but damn, it takes its toll on your tits, doesn't it? Okay. Um, what was the hardest thing that I did? Well, I sort of mentioned just before that I wanted to do something with the waste from my birth. Um, and so, cause I did want it to be incinerated cause it was all a part of this zero waste mission. So I decided that I would cook it. And I um, met up like a, with a bunch of people who had cooked their placenta in the past. Some people made it into like jerky, which is a bit of fun. Um, another guy made it into a pizza topping. And I decided that um, maybe cheese and placenta wasn't something that I was interested in, but maybe a plus sausage roll could be an exciting alternative. Pastry, hmm, yeah. So I did that and um, it was pretty gross, actually. Don't recommend. I only nibbled on it in the end. See, this was another thing, like, I guess people would probably have thought, what a freak, why did you do that? But it did have a... There was a reason to be in my mind, which is that I was also really wary of the fact that it was a podcast about the environment. And I feel like lots of people have fatigue about that topic generally. And I was like, how can I make this like dynamic and sexy and interesting? And so my radio kind of brain kicked in and I was like, why don't I do a stunty type thing where I show that, you know, placenta birth waste is incinerated and it could be reused and I do something weird with it, you know, basically. And um, the iconic Aussie snack plus sausage roll. Um, anyway, and so that's, it's what I did and um, it, it was a bit yuck, but it was probably one of the hardest things was to um, watch my placenta sizzle on a fry pan. Because actually, like for those who are listening in, uh, who couldn't you bury your placenta in the garden to create nutrients? Absolutely. Yes. And that was an option. That's another thing that a lot of people do, bury it in the backyard, like an, underneath a lemon tree or something, which is also a really like symbolic and um, beautiful way to reuse it. Totally. Um, ooh, what was I saying? Hmm, don't know. <laughs> On there. Um, what was the most surprising thing I learnt about the alternatives? Well, so one of the interesting things that I sort of um, delved into was whether uh, disposable nappies were definitely worse than cloth nappies. And it turns out, um, yes, they are <laughs> because of the plastic contained in them and the amount that you throw out and you go through in a day. 
Um, but also because, but, but there was some sort of question mark around whether you use like a dryer, how eco-friendly it is and how old it is. And the same with a washing machine. And also when you use that hotter temperature, which you're supposed to use for poo, for example, um, what sort of a difference that makes to the footprint. So, um, I kind of looked into stuff like that. Um, and whether all of the, um, crap that I was going through having to, uh, use cloth nappies was worth it because, and I kind of give like a warts and all version of how it was because it really wasn't easy doing cloth nappies in the beginning because they, um, were quite leaky for me for the first three months. And I think that that's brand related so um, you got to get yourself the right brand. And in the beginning, I had hired a whole heap of them and was just testing out the different brands. So I certainly was trying to do that. If you're looking into um, cloth nappies and you're not quite sure, hiring a, a package of nappies where you get like a bundle of 40 or something that are all different brands and you get to sort out which one works for you, whether it's Velcro, whether it's, you know, whatever. Um then that, yeah, is a good option. And I ended up deciding on this brand Bambino Mio, which I thought was really good. Um, but I still had leaky issues because I think I just had a kid with a small butt. <laughs> um, she got my butt. So uh, I didn't know how to deal with that. And after three months, I ended up putting her in bamboo uh, biodegradable nappies uh, after that. So which is what I still do now for overnight so that I can sleep through the night. And I kind of justified it in my mind as being like, whatever helps my mental health at this point because I just need to get some sleep. So I also just got a whole bunch of advice from people about what they did. And a lot of people said that to me that um, cloth nappies are tricky until after three months when they sort of fit the baby better. Which, I mean, I don't even know why that would happen. I guess it's the elastic in disposable nappies or the bamboo um, nappies that I was using. Like, do you um, know the zero waste influencer, Anita Van Dyke? She was someone who I deferred to a lot for her advice. Oh, she got so many good likes. Yeah, she's great. And so... Um, she was someone who uh, I was asking questions and she uses bamboo nappies overnight. And I was like, if she does, I am. <laughs> also, my mate who's um, very, has re excellent, reliable advice about anything environmental. Jessie's her name. She uh, said the same thing. So she was like, yeah, bamboo ones are fine. Like, and then there's the whole crazy... Um, issue of how they do biodegrade like and they're not compostable and they have to be in a certain climate in order to bio biodegrade and ugh, you can really get lost in uh, that minefield <clears throat> but it's worth doing your research I mean I sort of did at the time and landed on this brand that I thought was doing the best job possible um, and now I use eco originals um, which is uh, an excellent option, I think. What did I learn about myself? <clears throat> um, is it possible to be a zero waste on the road? We have a van. Oh, yeah, okay. I did do a little bit of zero wasting on the road, um, which was really tricky for drying cloth nappies. That was the hardest thing for us. I have this photo where we were on a road trip from Sydney to Canberra in Australia, and we had... Um, just nappies hanging out the windows and like all through the car. It was like we were in a piss sauna of <laughs> like, yeah, it was just so hideous. So the drying issue was really tricky with cloth nappies unless you were going to use a dryer at the motel or whatever that you stopped at um, or caravan park or whatever if you into vans. But um. What else was tricky on the road? Yeah, it's the washing, actually. Yeah, the convenience of disposables really come into their own at that point, and you're like, oh, my gosh, how do I avoid this? Uh, particularly 
things like avoiding squeezy packs, I reckon, are possible because I use this amazing um, thing called Subo, which is from Australian TV. I discovered them on Shark Tank. They're these inventors who live in Melbourne who have this product called Subo, um, which is based around the idea of a toothpaste, you know, one of those cylinder toothpaste things where you push it and toothpaste comes out. Yeah, you know what I mean. Not a regular tube, like a <laughs> cylinder tube. Uh, anyway, it was based around that invention where essentially there is um, baby food, mush, mute, like porridge or whatever, um, and the baby can suck it out. So that's where the suck suction technology came from. That's a really good product, which I thought was great to use. It also is convenient for babies to have in the car or whatever. It doesn't make a mess. And it's reusable um, and it acts the same as a squeezy pack. Um, <clears throat> what did I learn about myself? Well, I learned that, um, like I set myself this mission about trying to be zero waste and I was very dogged in my approach and I really wanted to succeed uh, as a parent of a newborn. Sorry if you've just joined. Um, I'm Veronica Milsom. I'm taking over for the Instagram for um, Plastic Free July. Thank you so much for joining. I'm talking about this mission that I went on to become a zero waste mum and it's a podcast that I made, which is, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, a very dogged approach. And I, I really just like bought along my family and friends for the ride and they didn't get a say in it. Um, and my husband was excellent in how much he jumped on board. In fact, he was the one who, he's a full, very inflexible vegetarian and he cooked the placenta on the fry pan. If you've just joined, I ate my placenta cooked into a sausage roll. It was about birth waste. Don't worry about it. I mean, worry about it, actually. It's terrible. Um, yeah, and but also the grandparents just couldn't wrap their head around it. Although boomers are really like, well, turns out that we were very eco, like, because we only had cloth nappies and, you know, all of the stuff, they, they're like, we don't really have plastic toys. I'm like, mm, really? It wasn't the 50s where you just had, you know, wooden toys. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I, like getting on board the boomers to not buy any plastic toys was pretty difficult. Um, and also getting them when they were babysitting to use uh, cloth nappies because they, well, they were like, why would you? Let's just use the disposal one. Did you go zero waste just for the baby or zero waste housewide? Just for the baby. Although, like it is crazy how much... Um, I set the mission to go zero waste just for the baby and it really impacted parts of my life immediately just because your eyes are opened to that world, you know? And I found myself doing it in a whole heap of different areas of my life too. Like, I guess less so zero waste, but more just not buying things. Like realizing so much that there's this ingrained culture that we need in every stage of our life, we need to buy all the things to do with a baby, you know? I remember with my first baby, I couldn't wait to go to baby bunting and buy all the bullshit. I was like, you know what? That, we don't need to do that. Everything is at a charity shop that you possibly need to get. And I, for me, it was a part of the process of becoming a mum and getting all the things, but I could have easily just acquired them on Facebook Marketplace or, you know, at the Salvos or something. Um, you use what you have. Yeah, exactly. It's, it makes so much sense. And it's definitely something that um, affected me in my life apart from just the zero waste parenting thing, even though I wasn't strictly zero waste. Yeah. Um, how did, are you sure you and Hing aren't related? What? That's so weird. Michael Hing, who took over from me as, um, <coughs> a radio host on the show I used to do. We're not related. Any tips on trying to convince a non-zero waste mum to cut back on waste? I mean, I guess just do it very, um, just be mindful of how you do it because I've, I think you can really rub people the wrong way, hey, with seeming like you're all high and mighty about 
what you do um, versus how they are living their life. And also some people just are trying to get by, you know, being a mum, particularly a first time mum is so tricky sometimes. So I think it, you know, whatever your, the capacity of your mental health can afford at that point. Um, but yeah, tips are like giving gifts that are zero waste, um, you know, affiliated could be really good. Whether that be a straw, like a stainless steel straw. Is that what they are? Stainless steel? Yeah. You know, like a reusable straw or giving like a Subo thing or gi- giving, um, a set of books that your kid has already had and doesn't want anymore. And you're like, here's five books for you, you know, Thomas's second birthday. And like just getting through that, um, I don't know. You just don't want to make it awkward. Like they're not doing enough or something that I was very aware of that. <clears throat> um, how did I motivate myself to keep going? Uh, well, I kept thinking about back about that conversation that I had with my husband about whether we should even have a kid at all with the current state of, uh, the environment. And I kept just thinking about, yeah, it's really hard to avoid talking about climate change at the moment, isn't it generally, but also just about waste and the, you know, great Pacific garbage patch. Like I just like to Google that every now and again, it very much motivates me about, reducing waste waste but also um to motivate myself I really lent on other people and talk to inspiring people so uh, doing the podcast really helped for that especially because I made myself accountable (laughs) that's a big one I reckon like if you tell people what you're doing and then they ask you about it and you gotta do it (laughs) um yeah, I was really out and out. This is what I'm doing. So it sort of forced me to jump on board. Um, yeah, but I, I really surrounded myself with people who gave a shit and doing the podcast and speaking to inspiring people was a part of that. Okay. At first I was like, oh, it'd be interesting to meet someone who's breastfed their kid until they were, you know, 12 or whatever. And I met, um, Maha Musa was someone who had breastfed her daughter for a really long time, this woman from Byron Bay. And I interviewed her and I just, she had the most beautiful energy and she told me her story and why she did it. And um, basically like TLDR, it was all about, um, you know, baby led weaning. And so her kid just didn't want to stop. And so she didn't, which is beautiful. And I guess it's a sideways glance at looking at um, zero waste parenting, but it was just kind of an interesting, inspiring person talking about their parenting journey. Yeah. Um, So did I ever consider giving up? No, I couldn't because I let my pride get in the way of it all. (laughs) And so I couldn't. And so, yeah, I I continued on past the three month goal that I gave myself, which probably was like a very modest goal in the end. And then I, um, ended up doing it for, well, I'm sort of still doing elements of it now. Like a lot of the elements, the bamboo, um, nappies at night, I definitely, do so that was breaking a big one adding to landfill um yeah uh would i recommend absolutely yeah but i mean you don't have to go gung-ho you don't have to try to do everything you can just try to do one thing you can just give cloth nappies a go and you can rent them and see if that works for you and hopefully it does but You don't need to make the full investment into buying all the cloth nappies and doing all the things. Um, You can sort of dabble and give it a go and see how it works for you. And I think it probably will ultimately, because when you actually take a moment as a parent to look at all of the waste that's piling up, which is just so much, you kind of can't help but be like, damn, we put out our garbage into the red bin like you know three times a week or something which is what we were doing with um our baby although you know we did use a nappy bin don't think we were just putting soiled nappies in the our normal kitchen garbage anyway um does anyone have any questions shoot them through now 
I'll wait. What else could I say? Um, what if you don't have a budget to buy all the fancy stuff? Like I was saying, if you just joined, um, I, oh, what? Um, if, uh, sorry, I've just seen that I had to scroll down and that I was like, oh, no one's doing anything. Oh, but I just missed heaps of people doing stuff. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, instead of using like flannel wipes that I bought from the shops or like, you know, bought from online, I actually literally ripped up a flannel shirt and was using parts of it. Not the bits with the buttons. Mm, that would be no good for a baby's uh, button. But uh, yeah, uh, things like that. There, I mean, I think there are workarounds. Hiring nappies, still pretty, cloth nappies, pretty still pretty expensive. I mean, elimination communication would be the way if you didn't want to spend any money on any nappies. But again, like if you've just joined in, it's this nappy free um, potty training method, which I learned a whole heap about and, and tried out myself, but I couldn't uh, get it happening. But I know a lot of people who uh, have had a really successful time with it. And that'd be the biggest way to, to um, save money avoiding nappies altogether. Um, but yeah, it, it, like I remember when I went to baby bunting at, when I was making this podcast, I just kind of went to have a look at all of the products that ha they had available now, as well as like scented nappy bin liners. I was like, that is completely unnecessary. Um, there was an entire aisle that was called disposables, <laughs> like so shameless. And I was like, I never noticed that being weird before. But now through the eyes of this like zero waste parenting idea, it's just crazy to me that you're like, hey, here's all the bullshit that you can use once and throw out. Um, how good's this? I was like, geez, at least be a bit more discreet about it. Uh, no, they, they were right on board. So, uh, yes, there's um, – lots that you can avoid buying if you are on a budget, apart from the fact that, as I was saying before, there's so much that you can just buy secondhand or that people are giving away baby stuff wise, you know, like whether it be bundles of clothes on Facebook marketplace or, you know, from every single bit of furniture, like everything exists. There's not that much. I mean, I was like, do you give your um, nursing pads to someone else? I was like, yes, I actually did. Um, there, there were things that I was like, is that something that you hand on? I'm not sure. Maternity pads that are reusable. That's probably one to keep for yourself. I don't know. Whatever you're comfortable with, really. Um, yeah, shoot through any questions now. Cause I've kind of rattled through a bunch of them and I'm probably going to finish up at some point. I've just been oh, chat, chat, chatting. Uh, what else can I say? What else did I, oh, I'll tell you one thing I tried, which was pretty interesting. When I was trying to cleanse, um, our whole lives of all of our material disposable plastic crap, uh, I got a Murray Kondo expert in to help out. And she was like for toddlers. So a specific for toddlers, Murray Kondo expert, you know, that Netflix show where the woman who cleans things by like getting you to pile stuff up and then she, she works out what, you know, you work out what sparks joy and then you get rid of the things that don't spark joy. Anyway, so this woman, this consultant came in to help my two-year-old work out what sparked joy. And it was such a bizarre process. She was in her bedroom with like piles of unicorns and teddies and Barbies. And she would hold things and be like, um, not joy. And then she would put it back down. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so bizarre. And at first she was really like, why is there a strange woman in my house making me hold things and work out if I'm appreciating them? But in the end, it was great. I took a whole heap of stuff to the charity shop and I was like, oh, sweet Lord. It actually really worked. Um, I don't think you need to get a consultant. I mostly did that for the podcast, but, uh, yeah, cleansing yourself so you don't, your kid doesn't feel like they need as much, I think is really uh, an important lesson that they don't need to constantly consume. And I think I was trying to drill that into them a bit too. Um, hello to all the people joining just now. I'm kind of like finishing up soonish. Um, 
was have just been talking about this journey that I was on um, as a zero waste parent because I was horrible with my first baby, uh, an environmental nightmare, a disgrace. And then with my second, I made this uh, huge effort to be um, zero waste as a parent. And it, it was a really great journey to be on and one that I entirely recommend to people. And even if you want to do it moderately and not go full gung-ho, I certainly recommend it. Um, I hope you didn't take the lion out of the wardrobe. Okay. Can you answer the questions? Oh, heck. I want to answer the questions. Do I keep missing them? Do I not know how to do Instagram Live? Oh, best glass containers without a plastic lid. Oh, God. Um, I don't, sorry, I don't know. I shouldn't have even read that. Um, do you think consumerism is the cause? Oh, like, would it have a, um, uh, like a um, cork lid or something? That wouldn't be the much help either. Do you think consumerism is the cause of too much waste? Of course. Yes, I absolutely think that. Um, let me just roll back through and see if there's any other questions. Um, yes, Green Earth Kids say small changes. If everyone does a couple of things, it would make a huge difference. I always think the same about vegetarianism. I'm like, yeah, if everyone just ate meat once a week, we'd all be fine. It's just that we can't have chicken and beef and pork every single day. Um, yeah, cool. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much um, for joining this. I think that it's going to go on IGTV maybe um, just for like the next 24 hours or something. But um, I appreciate your time and I really think that you should, let me, I've just got to say this and also I want to, um, that you should go to the website and take up the challenge of going plastic free for July, even though it's halfway through July, don't matter. In fact, you, you can just do this anytime. So plasticfreejuly.org is the URL that you should go to. And um, take up the challenge of going plastic free because I did and it was good. <laughs>